Hi, this is Mia. Um, I was talking a little bit, and I, I want to edit that other video, so I'm going to just continue from where I am and see if I can edit that. These earrings were from the old church, so I was nostalgic. Uh, I was talking about this necklace that was, and all this jewelry that was kind of uh, from Free Piles, and um, this was a free pair of earrings that I got with some socks. So I got some costume jewelry here, and some used Goodwill jewelry, and some earrings that I got in high school. I believe from my fundraiser from my high school, uh, this costume jewelry and these I love these um, Legos that are shaped like flowers and fruit. I got some that have circuit boards on them, and then my the one from the Hello Kitty uh, character. I don't remember this character's name. I'm trying not to tangle this up. And then here's one of the two, one of the homemade earrings. So I hope to be able to fix that other video that I just made because I'm upset for some reason um, and then I had the old earrings from the old church and I wanted to talk about I was talking about the old church but um, I miss the fellowship I miss seeing people that I knew I didn't like always being left out and not being invited and not having friends and not being invited to my kids weren't invited to their events um, so the worst was the racism inside the church and then wondering why there's no people of color or why the people of color leave after one visit or like a half a visit. My dad came and said, I don't like the way those people treated me. And I hated when I was doing the soundboard or the children's or the um, audio and video team, video team. I would bring people and or have my kids and have all these weeks because if there was five weeks and a month five Sundays in a month you had to rotate and potentially do two of every job I had at least I had three jobs on Sunday so you have four Sunday week you only have one Sunday you can actually sit with the congregation and you're volunteering my kids would have had to be like unattended and just so much chaos I hated that and if you brought a friend or a guest or your relative came there wasn't really anybody to sub to take your spot or to switch with you which sucked um, because of course those people are like oh you brought me to this mean shirt racist church and now I have to sit on a chair in a row by myself because nobody wants to sit with me because I look like a freak because I'm new and People are gonna judge your look and think that you're poor, so I'm not gonna like you know people are fake, you know. Um, all right, so I-84 Columbia River Gorge close two weeks weather. So it actually put dot com on here. I really did not want to. Um, Let's see, these are all new roads. I'll have to find that out, um, see if there's an article. 2022. So there's a lot of um, articles on 2022 about the Columbia Gorge closing, so after deadly crash on icy roads. Um, I-84 sees closures. This again from 2022. Eastern Oregon due to weather, winter weather and crashes. Uh, so the Columbia River Gorge is following the Columbia River out from Portland, Oregon east into Idaho. And the weather gets really <laughs> like creepy shady. And the drive to Hood River I love. And our, what's the other town? I can't remember the name of the town, right past Hood River. That's where we used to go for vacation because it was the cheapest hotel. The, um, so we went to vacation, the town after the Super 8, and then we also went camping out there. What's in an island? The Locks, Cascade Locks. And I got yelled at in Hood River from some guy saying that I should know some black 
professional artist had a singer or a drummer or something that was black and this guy was yelling at me because I didn't know who this person was and I'm like I don't know if it was a jazz musician and I was like I don't even listen to jazz like I knew who Eddie Vedder was and you know Anthony Kiedis like I was like black or not black I had certain music I listened to when I was a kid and I mean I shouldn't be forced to go through all black music just because I'm black there's stuff that I liked there's my parents, my mom was to Natalie, Natalie um, Cole, and, you know, stuff like that. Some crumbs on the bed. I am really sad that I have good memories from that abusive church, and I knew that there was abuse in my family, my ex-husband, my mom, my dad. There was abuse from society with racism, and, uh, did I say my ex-husband? And being, like, in a place where I wanted consistency for my children with the school and the church because we moved so much. I changed my meetings, my 12-step meetings and different things with um, my mom telling me how she hated being the new girl at school. So I wanted the kids' school and the church to remain a constant thing because of all that. Then we moved 10 times in 10 years. It was probably more like 10 times in six years or whatever, but it was just a nightmare. And I went to the pastor's house and we'd have the morning show, or the morning show, the morning prayer, women's. They changed it to a day that I couldn't come and then I, I don't think I ever went again because my kids stopped going because they were excluded and the people were really ignorant, very ignorant. Like someone came up, someone I knew for like five years, you hear the way I speak because I was raised in the U.S. of A. in a normal place, whatever normal is, and all my relatives born in the inner city, I learned how to speak English from them, and my accent is from being a descendant of people that are from the south and the inner city black neighborhoods. My, the way that I speak is the way that my relatives speak, is the way that my grandmother speaks, is the way that my dad and my mom and a little bit of one of my southern relatives, he has a little, like, it's not even a drawl, it's just like a little bit of tone that could signify that you're from the south, right? Um, like, barely, though. Like, I, I never even heard, I never heard it. Um, that they said they, they said they heard their own voice sounding like that. But the way that I speak is from the mother tongue, from what, how my mother spoke. And this lady after like going to church for like seven years excuse me she comes up to me like and i'm looking at her like what did you say to me say i know how you speak i've been talking to you for years whatever you're saying i don't understand and that's not how i speak i mean do people think we come in around white people and we just turn on a different accent like i don't even know maybe people do that but I was like, really? And she's like, I know you. I was dating a black person once. I know how you are. Like, And she just went, she had this crazy look in her eye. Like, I don't like, slave master's daughter or something. Like, spoiled daughter. Like, it was scary. Like, looking down at me, like. Well, I hope what you said to me was polite and nice. Yeah, have a good day. Like, I don't get it. Like, who does that? Like, obviously there's people that do that. Or the pastor's wife told me that I was a liar because there's no such thing as racism. That ended over 200 years ago. Ended where? Stupid people. In Iceland? Uh, is there, are there blacks there? Uh, in uh, Antarctica, before there was any people living there, and before it started, come on, 200 years ago, my butt, it's gotten worse and worse, because we're more integrated, black females have such a high college education level, my partner made me home, I miss the walking the dog with the pastors, I miss giggling, I miss that time that I went over there for Thanksgiving, and they 
parents left and that they had this fancy electric stove that was beeping and making all kinds of noise and I'm trying to ask the older child how to fix it and then the food some of the food got burnt and they had to remake it and it was a nightmare because people act weird what I like is that facade I get I want to be I liked how the pastor's wife was so pretty and smiley and professional looking and she was just like the skinniest tall lady and I liked how they had this house that had a pantry and cupboards and an island stuff that I didn't have and it was still a modest house but it was big big enough and had a garage to store your stuff and put stuff in cabinets I said why do my dishes all over the counter and not wash or not taken out of the drying rack because you don't have cabinet space to put it you don't have cabinet space to put your food just all over the counters and no drawers to put your utensils I mean you can make do but it's really challenging if you don't have space to put your juicer and your unused appliances and stuff um, it's very I, I, that opened my eyes of what happens when you're poor and homeless how much harder it is to get through a day when you don't have a washer and dryer how much harder it is to get through a day when you don't have a place to wash your car at least clean out your car and vacuum your car without being in a public parking lot where people are like oh wow she's got you know a battery pack and oh wow she's got some electronics and CDs like you don't want to smash and grab you know you don't have your garage or your suburban neighborhood and all this stuff um, they had money stolen though from their cleaning lady um, that's a different story they had uh, bought like four houses plus another house and we all got to visit one I tried to pay them to visit the others but they didn't allow me to pay for them um, they wouldn't allow me to be a customer I didn't ask for any discount at all so I just wanted to instead of paying the hotel $200 a night I thought why not pay them you know a hundred dollars a night for a whole house with a hot tub and a tennis court and a you know a community tennis court and a pool this is the life of the suburban pastors clean cut kids kids with friends white kids how popular the white kids were and how they got to do things like family trips around the world and skiing all the time and visiting back and forth with their grand grandma and stuff that me and my kids didn't get to do you want to think they've got it because God has blessed them and they have set out to do the work of the ministry of the of our higher power because I was going to AA or Al-Anon and AA at the time or yeah Al -Anon, AA, NA mostly NA at the very beginning so that facade of look at me I am loving children I'm taking care of children I'm letting you call me when you're down and we're putting together these events and these dinners and we have elders and they smile and look at you and smile or they yell at you for things that I didn't do and then behind the scenes they exclude you and they hate you and they call you a liar and they said you have poverty mentality you're a beggar when I went to the shelter run by the YWCA the first time you see your counselor when you do the intake and get accepted and they don't send a police to get you on any warrants they tell you you need to go first thing tomorrow morning to the welfare office do what I say you need to get food stamps welfare and medical period or you're getting kicked out so I wasn't a beggar but I fled everybody said oh yeah we have homes we have houses we have apartments but you can't stay with us you can't 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 we didn't ask to stay with them but I fled for my life we went on one outreach once and picked up cigarette butts around the tennis court at some school and we had got t-shirts we we spent two and a half months getting ready for that we're not gonna we're not gonna go to church we're gonna be the church and I was patting this house in the back and I'm like yeah when are we gonna do it again four weeks and six weeks we never did it again they might have done it since I left but I was so excited to get out instead of just keeping 
that exclusive Christianity to yourselves and then having the kids and the parents tell you do this and God says to do that and don't have relations and don't do this but then everybody was doing that so then I don't mind the teaching if you're gonna walk the walk and talk the talk but I don't like the hypocrisy and I always saw the hypocrisy but I said you know what these are humans they're not perfect they've been blessed they have new cars the kids got accepted to school they have a family life their kids are dating going to proms people are getting married in the church I never got the blessings that these people have is it because they were white and entitled is it because they could get cheaper housing and jobs that paid more with no education and no good credit versus someone who comes in with a solid down payment excellent credit score two kids I want to put in the best schools that I could afford in my own self the private uh, medical school I guess was it a private yeah um, I just want to cry 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 all this nostalgia paying so many ties and they tricked me into paying ties off stuff I shouldn't have tied and sending offers because I felt like I was going to be cursed and that's why I was in such a bad place and then you find out like 12% of the congregation is even tithing and the tithers were me and my two kids if they got a little bit of money they tithe you're not supposed to tithe your gifts your ten dollar gift birthday but I wanted them to be in the habit and I wanted them to have the blessings the blessing built up in heaven or the um, treasures built up in heaven not on earth I could have stayed a lot of money out of debt and paid my student loan interest and really started my medical practice on the ground running so it's not for everybody I tried I spent ten years nine to ten years in that place just to be anonymous I'm not I'm scared that my partner's already here and I don't want him to hear because I'm more embarrassed when I talk oh yeah I was showing my shirt in the other one I missed one of the main people. I got sexually assaulted twice in that building, by the way, by the old youth pastor. I said his name on some of my videos. Look for that or put in the comments that you can't find it and I'll find and post more videos. So you can find that name of that person. One of the um, figures there was, and that person who sexually assaulted me was him and his wife are the only paid workers there, that are at least the ones we all volunteer. So they paid these people. Dirty rotten scoundrels, scums I meant to say, scum bags. I had to get away from him. I got yelled at for leaving the post that he was a supervisor in. They wouldn't let me speak the truth. It was sickening. Sickening, guys. I'm glad that my kids refused to go. They didn't need to be with this pervert. They didn't need to be with someone who needs to be in jail for felony, sex assault, it's sickening, I'm traumatized, one of the figures there that wasn't that person was nice, family person, I'm a tomboy so this person was sometimes down to earth and I, they had issues with 
telling them to do stuff when they had been aging and had some medical issues. And I felt sorry for them for not being able to allow their body to heal and just work. And the more work that this guy did, obviously, the more money that they brought in. And the wife would brag about her nice clothes and how well-dressed she was and how she had friends who gave her nice clothes, too. So that's one of the perks about being middle and upper middle class. You meet people that know someone that knows someone, and they give you stuff. They'll give someone wealthy stuff before they give a homeless person or a single mom a dollar. Isn't that crazy, though? The people that get a lot of help, like that spoiled lady, they get more help from everybody. And they know how to charm people. And make you think, I'm a guru. Hang with me. Give me money. Give me this. Give me that. Give me, give me, give me. I was a tomboy. I was a single mom. This person used to check in on me sometimes. And... When I left, there was a couple of messages, and I don't even know about if I blocked them, but I just let it dwindle. They said I had the devil in me, and that's why I wasn't there. I didn't have the devil in me. I was sexually assaulted by a youth leader. And I was excluded, and I heard you say, I brought these Mexican-Americans and Latinos. Those aren't the people we want in our church. And the last members meeting you held in private and you rounded up a bunch of white, old white men and you had them come in your office and speak. And you excluded all the rest of us. I have been there since 2003. And they ain't having no all members meeting and a little church that, or a little office that has one chair and a three-person couch. Come on. You have a all-church meeting where you have the, the actual church service or one of the rooms where you see the children down in the basement, right? Where you have enough room for everybody. And they had the accessibility to get down into the basement, at least one of the basement part. And so they knew that they after they announced that there was a all members meeting and then they it just went and grabbed certain people and they had a couple guys at the door, probably that pervert and I was walking around everywhere. Where's the meeting? Where where's oh I don't know. I don't know. And that guy was blocking anybody because when they all poured out of the pastor's office Oh, they excluded me and a whole bunch of other people. Oh. I've been tithing and offering and volunteering at least two days a week at that place. Indefinitely. Not indefinitely, but since two, since the, pretty much the week I went. The first time I came was a potluck and then they invited me back and I came back every Sunday. Right away they told me to go work with the toddlers or the preschool age children. They did my background check and I was in the Sunday school right away. My son learned about in Genesis the sky being made. He came home that first day. He said, I learned I can't even hear understand my son at that age, but he said, Oh, he was two. He said, I learned about the I learned about the God created the sky and he brought home a picture that's like blue with cotton balls and I told the teacher Oh, you told the story to your kids, and my son came home and told us, Oh, those kids that age, they don't know anything. But my son came home and told me what you said. Like, like wow. Mm -hmm. My family's smart. <laughs> it's the truth. That's part of the blessing and the curse. Because I'm so overwhelmed. Guys, I'm so overwhelmed. I was watching Granny Karma. I don't, is that her name? Granny Karma? The way she is on her films, she is sweet. She has a loving family, pet, pets, 
and she's hardworking, and unfortunately she had lost her partner, her lover, her husband. So I guess in her early videos, he's on there, and I, I'm really sad, and I love her homestead. I like the uh, Tommy Carolina's homestead, and I see these African Americans loving their neighbor, loving themselves, loving their family, taking care of their animals, taking care of their house, teaching us these things with kindness and wisdom. And I see the people like from the old church and other people that I know that aren't black, I see a lot of corruption and but we're the ones they're saying, you're the criminal, you're the crackheads, you're the mom that has baby daddies all over. You got six kids, but you got six kids, but seven guys. Like, you're the reason, you know, the, the Christians used to call me to get donations and say, the, the Christian voters guide, well, we want to raise money because single moms are the problem with this country. Their sons go to jail and their daughters get married all before our get married. They have children out of wedlock all before age 18. Single moms are the problem with the world. I ain't giving you money. I had given you money before. I ain't giving you money. If you're a Christian, why aren't you going out into the trenches with people that dads got falsely incarcerated? DNA evidence did not support that this person did a crime. Witnesses will admit he did it, he did it, that black guy did it, when they actually did it. Planning evidence. And these people are trying to get to work. There's a, I think there's a Monsters, um, this is a Monsters episode that shows a woman getting killed in the hotel, and the person they blame was the black guy, and he didn't have anything to do with it. Just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I'm pretty sure he was on his way to work. And the white husband who did it, he got away with it, murder. So people will do things. He got no jobs, except for our reasons inside the inner city. I mean, kids, fathers, and inappropriately uh, taken out of the home. And people harassed and racism, stressing people out. So people using sex and booze and stuff as an outlet. I know how it is to be stressed out and use but booze and behaviors as an outlet. I still do it, that's why I'm obese. And then you have the audacity. Every single person that I know in my family owns a house and has a professional career where they went to school to have. And they're raising their kids in a religious place. And that doesn't really mean anything if they're hypocrites, but they're teaching them these values and they're speaking like me, not cussing not talking hood talk and smoking a crack pipe and jumping from one woman's bed to the next. Everyone that I know who's African American and especially my family members who I visited, they had spotless clean houses, big meals, modest dress. There's other people with other cultural values, including my, me. I was a black sheep of that. And look at me. I'm the only one in my family that's a doctor and I'm the only one that doesn't own a house and I'm the poorest person. So, I learned some things on the black and white on the book, books. I learned about more about higher power and feeling socially acceptable to trust in a, the universe and my higher power. I learned about love yourself, and like love your neighbors like you love yourself. And I learned if I didn't love myself, that it'd be hard to love my neighbors, even though I gave to them too much overdo it because I don't the golden rule I don't want other people to feel like I felt when I grew up in a toxic environment so that that's the foundation is toxicity in my life from before I was even born or conceived my abusive parents and society of abuse on blacks ex slaves no matter how white jeans me and my kids are we're still gonna be one drop of black you're black So with these earrings, I have these memories. I could just go and throw these in the trash right now. I think my partner's home.
Tommy Bites TV got an alert, but I, um, I'm gonna rest up, I'm gonna listen to my hour and a half class, and I'm gonna do whatever, um, we wanna do for our walk, and I, cause I have to get sun cause I'm sick. I had a lot of good memories. I made friends with Jody. She was a poor single mom, moving all the time, and she had three boys, and she invited us to Halloween, or Halloween, to Thanksgiving. She invited us to holidays. She invited us to her sister's house. I knew her mom, I knew her dad, I knew her sister, her sister-in-law, or her brother-in-law, her three kids, and the three kids, the oldest, ended up getting married, and so I hung out with the whole family and the babies and everybody. Not that much, because she'd come and go, but going somewhere for nine, ten years, there's an opportunity to, to have phone calls and prayer sessions and work, go to work together, and she helped me clean my apartment when we had inspections. Neither of us had a vacuum cleaner, and I had inspections all the time. She borrowed a vacuum cleaner from one of her clients. She asked him, oh, can I borrow this vacuum cleaner for a couple of hours? So she came over at 6 a.m. to vacuum my house and had to leave to take it to work, you know. I, have, I asked God to give her the biggest blessing. Because she was the one that told me, don't listen to these people when they tell you people like, you can't go to school. Please tell me you signed up to, to do your prerequisites for med school. Please tell me you registered for classes. And she was like an angel when she was in communication. Then she disappeared. She had a lot of issues with her um, ex and moving and jobs and struggling to be a single parent. But we met her. She was like 50. And I was like 28. She might have been 40 something, but she looked 25 years younger than she was. I want to know what she did. She was blonde, natural blonde, blue, blue eyes. I want to know what she did for her skincare. She was so fun. Peace, guys. My hands are not dark on the inside. Some people's might be, but this picture is weird.